welcome to lesson 28 of industrial automation and control course under the NPTEL program. Today we are uh, we are going to look at a very interesting topic. In the last two lectures we have seen various hydraulic system components. In this lecture we will see how they can be joined together to uh, form hydraulic circuits for various kinds of industrial applications. So that is going to be very interesting for me at least to tell you. So looking at the instructional objectives, after this lesson a student should be able to cite typical industrial actuation problems, some very common problems which occur in the case of uh, industrial systems. So uh, then in many cases we you know energy is very expensive. So we, do, we never like to uh, spend energy unnecessarily. So there are various kinds of you know energy saving schemes especially hydraulic systems which are, are very high power systems. So saving energy is important. So we will see how we can save energy for such systems and sometimes we will find that we need to you know we need to create motions using hydraulic systems. So we need to adjust speeds, we need to adjust forces depending on the requirement of the load. So how to do them <coughs> and finally we all these circuits will draw using some using specific hydraulic symbols. So we will we'll, we'll see in the course of this lesson how to uh, interpret hydraulic symbols, how to understand what components are being used and how to figure out how uh, hydraulic circuits work from a, from a, from a circuit diagram. So, uh, so we first come to our first circuit, what is that? In this circuit, it is called an unloading circuit. So there are, see the circuit, there are uh, two pumps, can you realize that this is a, this is actually a hydraulic pump, this is a hydraulic pump, this is also another hydraulic pump and they are being driven by a common motor. So this is the prime mover, this is the prime mover. And these pumps are actually connected in parallel. This is where it is going to the load or the system. So the pump A flow is going this way. This is a check valve. So this way is free flow for the check valve if you recall. This is flow of pump A and this is flow of pump B. They are being, they are, they are getting joined here and the total flow that is flow of pump A plus pump B is actually flowing onto the load. Now you see we know that what is the hydraulic power requirement? Power requirement is force into flow rate or other pressure into flow rate which is equal to force into speed. So if the load force and, and finally we must recall we must realize that the power comes from the prime mover and the prime mover is designed to handle a certain amount of power. So if at, certain, at a certain point of time the force requirement in the load goes up, then just to be able to, so that the power requirement does not go out of the prime mover's capabilities, so we need to reduce flow rate, right. So for heavy loads we generally move them slowly and light loads we can move them fast, right. So what happens if suddenly the force requirement in the system goes up, immediately what will happen is that the pressure here will tend to go up, so pressure will go up. Now you see that there are two relief valves, this is one relief valve and this is another relief valve. Now if we have decided that if the pressure goes up beyond this setting, remember that we are talking about hydrostatic pumps or, or, or positive displacement pump generally. So as long as the speed is the same, the, the volume being delivered is the same and the power requirement is directly proportional to the pressure. 
assuming that the volumetric efficiency is same, the leakage, etc., are not significant. So now, we if we want to, the 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 pressure has gone up because the force requirement has gone up. So we want to reduce flow rate. So so what do we want to do? So we have this setting of this relief valve as uh, if the setting is exceeded at some point, then what is going to happen is that this relief valve will vent. So the pump flow at that time, let me use a different color. So the pump flow at that time, so this is the case for both pumps loaded. So let me go to the other diagram. Uh, then we will be able to see the case where pump A is unloaded. So then when pump A is unloaded because this relief valve setting has been exceeded, so this is the flow rate of the pump, right. And this, so, the, so, so this pump gets, gets unloaded, so therefore the power demand on this motor reduces and, the, and now the system is only fed from this flow rate. So you see that uh, we have we can we can we can unload a pump when the pressure requirement goes up to keep the power requirement so that if the if suddenly we put a very heavy load then it will still be moved but it will be moved slowly. This is our first example Le leads to some amount of you know leads uh, does not get into. Now, in, now, now, interestingly, there is there's one point to mention that what is the role of this check valve? See, when when this pump is getting unloaded, then remember that this flow cannot this flow cannot go through this part because this check valve is blocked. So, therefore, this pump really cannot unload through this relief valve. So, this pump will continue to deliver until the setting of this relief valve is is also exceeded. You see, all pumps have overloads overload uh, protection using relief valves. So, if for some reason you have put such a heavy load which cannot be even handled by one pump, in that case this relief valve will vent and the load will of course stop and the fluid will flow like this, but the motor load, motor will be protected from overloading. So, this is the way this circuit functions. Then we go to the our next circuit, we are going to see a number of such applications. So, the next circuit is where we want to again, we want to in this case what was happening is that the pump was getting, if, if the pressure goes up, then the pump gets unloaded. But now we want a different thing, we want to select the pressure with which we want to drive the load. So what happens is here, so we have, we, we, we have three modes of the system, in the first mode the system will vent, that is the pump will, will, be, will be directly connected to tank, no fluid, no, no flow, second is it will be operated at a low working pressure, thirdly it will be working at a high working pressure, so there are three modes and we want to select the modes, so that happens like this. So here is the circuit first for the vent mode. So in the vent mode, what is happening? Look at this circuit. So what 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 components do we have? We have the tank and the reservoir here. We have the pump. We have the motor. We have a relief valve, and this is where it goes to the system. Now, the pressure limits, the pressure up to which the system can occur, will obviously be selected by this relief valve. And this relief valve actually the there are this is a pilot operated relief valve. So in this valve at what what is the setting of the relief valve that depends on the pilot pressure. We have seen such valves before. Now so actually what we are going to do is, so let us see what happens. So how is the pilot pressure determined? So let us look at the pilot circuit. So this is the pilot line dashed. When there are, this is this is a directional valve, right? 
there are it is a solenoid operated valve you can see that from the symbol and there are two springs. So, when both solenoids are off then it is spring centered. So, both the springs will push and it will keep keep it at the center. What is the position at the center? At the center it is the pump port is directly connected to the tank port. So, if A and B neither of them are energized then this directional valve is at the center and therefore, the vent port of this relief valve C is actually connected directly through the central position of the directional valve to the tank. So, actually there is no pilot pressure, the, the pilot pressure is actually a tank pressure and therefore, this pressure is very low. So, 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 so directly the pump vents and no fluid goes to the system. So, this is the operation in the venting mode. Now, what happened in the other modes? So, let us go to the other modes. So, in the medium pressure mode, what is happening is the following. So, in the medium pressure mode, we have energized solenoid A. So, when we have energized solenoid A, we will assume that the this position, this position of the valve is active. So, now the pump port is connected like this, through this, through this, to this and this. So, now the what is the pilot pressure? The pilot pressure is actually determined by the setting of this valve E. So, whenever the pressure will exceed the setting of this valve E, the vent port will open. Therefore, the system pressure gets limited by the setting of E. Setting of C, set C, C itself has a setting, its own setting, which is not its, it, it is also a relief valve. So, it has, it has a, this is a remote pilot, but it has its own setting. So, that setting is actually higher, higher than the setting of E. So, in that case, what is happening? So, in this case, the setting of e, the system pressure is actually limited by the setting of E and E being the lower one of E and C. So, therefore, we have a medium, the limiting pressure is now medium. So, now we go to the, I am sorry, we go to the next one, which is the high pressure mode. So, what is happening in the high pressure mode? In the high pressure mode, we are now in this position. So, in this position what is happening? First see that this port is actually plugged, this is plugged, means that it is sealed. So, therefore, the pilot pressure can go up to any level, theoretically can go to very high level. So, the operation, of, so now the operation of this valve is, is, is not limited by the pilot pressure because the pilot is connected to a plugged port. So, the pilot does not vent the valve. So, now it is, it is operated by its own setting. So, now in this system pressure gets limited by the setting of the valve C itself and since the setting of the valve C is higher than that of E, so we can limit the system pressure to a higher level. So, you see that we can, we, we, we are able to, we are able to achieve this by either energizing A or energizing B or energizing none. So, we can select the system operating pressure mode. This is our second example. So, in the third example, in the third example, we have a very common circuit, which is a reciprocating circuit. Hydraulic circuits are often required to execute cyclic motion. That is, suppose we have a cylinder, it will extend, it will push the load and it will come back, right. So, suppose some, uh, suppose some um, conveyor belt has brought a, has brought some item. So, there may be a hydraulic arm which will push the item into the bin and then it retract. So, there are, there are now various cases. In some cases, the pushing forward is under a load. The pushing backward is free. So, there are various cases that arise and we will see some of these because this extension retraction uh, reciprocating movement is a very common thing in hydraulic circuits. So, we first look at a reciprocating circuit and in particular, we look at the extension stroke first. So, here is the circuit. 
So what's happening here? Very simple. Again, always start from the pump. So here is the pump, the filter, this is the drain line. This is the relief valve, which is uh, typically, typically used for overload protection of the pump. Now, in this case, see, look at this valve. This valve has, first of all, try to interpret the symbol. The symbol has a, it, it has a solenoid plus it has a hydraulic pilot. So actually it's, it's probably this direction valve is actually a very big valve. So therefore, it is not operated only by a solenoid. The previous valve was being operated only by a solenoid. In this case, we are having a solenoid which is operating a hydraulic pilot which is again in turn operating this big directional valve, right. And we have in this case, we have only one uh, this thing, uh, only one uh, solenoid and the other side is so if you switch off the solenoid, it will come to. So it has only two positions. If the solenoid is off, it goes to the right hand position. If the solenoid is on, it goes to the left hand position. So now we are at the left hand position when the, when the, when the, when the solenoid is on. So the pump flow goes like this, like this, like this and enters what is known as the cap end or the head end of the cylinder, pushes it towards left. At the same time, Look at this line. This line is plugged here. So there is nothing. The, this valve is a cam operated valve. So unless the cam is, when the cam is operated, it is supposed to be in the left position. When the cam is not operated, it is supposed to be in the right position. So currently it is in the right position. So this, so, so this side is off. This side is off means this, the relief valve port is plugged. So therefore the full pressure is actually applied to the load. The pilot port is plugged and this cylinder is moving this way, right. So this is the extension stroke. What happens in the next stroke? In the next stroke, now uh, we, have an we have a retraction stroke. So what happens? is when it reaches the end, it, it operates this limit switch at the end, at the extreme end of the extension stroke. That limit switch is actually connected to this solenoid in such a way that immediately when the limit switch is made or switched on, this solenoid is put off. So when the solenoid is put off, this directional valve assumes the right position. So what is happening in the right position? In the right position, the pump flow it goes like this. So now you see, what is the matter here? So in the right position, the pump flow goes like this and enters what is known as the rod end of the cylinder. So the, now the cylinder moves towards the right. Note that the cam is still not operated. So therefore, this is still plugged and this is also still plugged and the full pressure is being operated, being, being applied to the cylinder, all right. So the next case, in the next case, a very interesting thing happens at the end of the retraction stroke. That is something special about this side. So at the end of the retraction stroke, when it comes fully to right, this rod is designed in such a manner that it pushes the cam. So when it pushes the cam, this valve now connects in the top position as we said. So in the top position, what is happening? In the top position, uh, this is the pump and this is the tank. So you see that this point is very close to tank pressure. So now the pilot port of this relief valve is actually connected. This is free flow, the direction of the check valve goes through this and comes to this point. So the position, so the pilot port pressure which is being applied is very close to this, which is in turn very close to this. So the pilot port is now connected nearly to tank, which means that this relief valve will now vent. So at the end of the retraction cycle, the 
tank directly vents, as rather the, the pump directly vents to tank. So, the power required by the tank, uh, by the pump is very low. So, at the end of the retraction cycle, while it is waiting, this pump does not unnecessarily spend power. So, it vents automatically, the, this circuit is made in such a manner. Next, what happens? How do you start a new cycle? So, you start a new cycle like this. A new cycle is actually started by pressing a push button. So, this coil is has to be connected in such an electrical circuit such that it can be switched off by this limit switch as we have seen at the extent at the end of the extension cycle and it can be switched on by a push button. So, every time you want to start one extension retraction motion, you need to switch on this solenoid. So when, you so, so, when you switch it on, again this shifts to the left, right. Now it is cam is made. So, this is in this position and this is in this position. So, now what is happening? Again this is connected to pump. This is pump now. This is connected to pump. So, now what, but unfortunately, so now it tries to flow like this, but this is, this pressure is now. Uh, so, now you see again this port is actually, so this, so the opposing force on the check valve is the full pump pressure. So, therefore, the pilot pressure, if this valve has to vent, then the, then the pilot pressure has to cross this level, otherwise the, there cannot be any flow. So, therefore, this full pump pressure can be applied to the hydraulic cylinder and it will start to move left. The moment it will start to move left, this cam will be released and when the cam is released, it will shift to the lower position and again the vent port of this valve is going to get plugged and the cycle repeats. So, this is the way that a, this is a conventional uh, reciprocation circuit. Only feature that has been added is that at the, at the end of a retraction one full extension under full power, retraction under full power and then at the end when you each reach the end of the retraction cycle, the pump is unloaded basically to save power. So, let us look at the next example. Now, we want to, we want to do some special things that is we want to save, sometimes it happens as I said that in the during the extension stroke, you are actually uh, pushing hard against the load. So, you want to do it slowly while the retraction stroke is free. So, you want to do it rapidly because you want to spend, you want to save time of the operation, right. So, let us see how we can do that. So, what we are seeing here, you see, Again, let us identify components, pump, motor, relief valve, this is tank and filter. This is a three position, this is a three position solenoid, electrical solenoid actuated, spring loaded valve, okay. So, and this is a flow control valve. And this is a, again a mechanically, sorry, mechanically operated valve with a, with the property that if you operate the switch, if you uh, operate the switch, as long as you do not operate the switch, then this is a direct short, that is this line is open. If you operate the switch, this line gets closed and this switch is mechanically operated by the end of the rod, right. So, you see what is happening here, the first what is happening is initially again when neither of the solenoids are operated, then it is centered. So, no, nothing, no flow, pump gets directly to tank. 
Next, you uh, operate it. Let us say you operate the left cylinder. So, if you operate the left cylinder, then pump. Uh, okay. First, let us look at the advanced circuit, which is the right cylinder. So, if you connect it, then port A gets connected to pump. So, the fluid flows when this coil is energized. So, this is for extension. and this is for retraction. So, during the extension when this is applied then fluid flows into this end, it comes out of this end and since the cam is not operated, so therefore, this is a short. So, it returns directly goes through this, goes through this returns. So, there is hardly any resistance direct short. So, this starts advancing very fast that is called the rapid advance, rapid advance. Then after a certain distance, this touches this and pushes it. So, therefore, during that time this operates and this is closed off. See it cannot pass through this, this is a check valve no flow along this. So, now the fluid is forced to flow along this, should use a different color. So, during the forward stroke, the fluid, fluid is forced to flow along the green line. And since this is a flow control valve, so there is only a certain amount of flow possible, not more than that. So, the flow is controlled, because we expect load here. So, again for power requirements, we, we need to reduce speed. So, we are doing that by using flow control. Now, what happens when we want to have retraction? When we want to have retraction, then we will operate this solenoid. When we will operate this solenoid, then what happens is now the, let me choose a different color, what is the blue one. So, during retraction now, this line B is connected to pump. So, where, how does it flow? So, it flows through this path and this path and this, now it flows through the check valve, this is the free, di free direction, this is still off, uh, this is still made, which means that this line is off, but that does not matter because this, this side check valve is free flow. So, it goes through this and it enters the rod end. So, the retraction and from t uh, cap end, it comes straight and it will go to the tank. So, during retraction all the way because of this check valve fluid will always flow through this and it will have a free flow path and it, there will be the, the flow rate is going to be high that does not matter because the load is not connected, pressure requirements are low and the pump can uh, with, with the pump flow you can, uh, you can you can very well manage right. So, uh, so, so, this is what is happening and you uh, can obtain a rapid retraction. Now, let us go to the next example. So, in the next example what is happening is that we want to, we are still having uh, reciprocation circuits, but now we uh, now we want to mm, have a regenerative configuration. What is regenerative configuration? See, previously you will you will you will recall that all in all your cases when you were trying to move the cylinder, one end suppose you want to move extend the rod. So, you push in fluid into the cap end and the fluid comes out at the rod end. So, you connect basically you connect the cap end to the pump and you connect the rod end to the tank. Now, here what we are saying is that we want to recirculate some of the fluid which is coming out of the rod end 
into the caplet. So, how that is possible? So, so that is exactly what is being shown here. So, you see again identify components first. So, you have uh, this is say A pump, this is B relief valve, this is C directional valve and this is D a cylinder. Now, see that we have drawn the cylinder rod a bit thick just to ensure that the rod area is not negligible to the cylinder piston area. This is the piston area capital A and this is the rod area small a suppose. So, what is happening is that now the two side areas are different, right? Also look at this particular uh, directional valve which is two position and it is kind of you know it is it's, it's detented in the sense that. So, when you what happens what happens when both the solenoids are off? So, when the both the solenoids are off then it stays in the position corresponding to the last operation of the solenoid. So, if last the solenoid A was on then it will even if you take A off it, it is going to remain at the left position. So, that is due to a mechanical you know arrangement. So, that is that is detention ok. So, now what is happening here is look at look at this that uh, suppose the pump flow here is V right. So, uh, so what is happening is that this part, what is the flow? Uh, this part the flow is uh, this, this is V, see the ratio of the flow into this suppose it moves by a distance x, then the volume field is A into x and the volume which is expelled is A minus A into x. So, if this is V 1 and if this is V 2 is coming out, then V 1 uh, V 2 by V 1 is equal to A minus A by A is equal to 1 minus A by A is equal to 1 minus 1 by K 1 minus 1 by K is equal to K minus 1 by K. So, this V 2 by V 1 and V 1 by V 2 is equal to K by K minus 1. Okay. So, now what is now? Uh, so, again V is equal to V 1 minus V 2 is equal to uh, V 2 yes is equal to V 1 uh, v, v is equal to V 1 minus V 2. So, it is V 1 minus V 1 equal to k by k minus 1 into V 2. So, it is k by k minus 1 minus 1 into V 2 that is equal to what that is equal to 1 by k minus 1 into V 2 k minus k plus 1. So, 1 by k minus 1 into V 2 and so V 2 is equal to k minus 1 let us let us write it in a different place. So, we get two equations we get V 2 is equal to k minus 1 into V and therefore, V 1 is equal to k into V. These are the two let me encircle them in a different color these are the final expressions. So, these are the flows you understand 
Uh, similarly, uh, so you see that, so if typical case is, this is the case during extension stroke. So actually you see that though the flow rate is k into v, typically k is greater than 1, but the actually the fluid drawn is from the pump is small v, right. Now what happens in the retraction stroke? In the retraction stroke, so in the extension stroke it is going to go like this, like this, it enters like this and then again part goes this and part goes, this is the, this is the flow patterns in the extension stroke. What happens in the retraction stroke? In the retraction stroke, in the retraction stroke, now you are in this position. So now this simply this is the path. directly this is the part there is there is no there is no fluid addition or anything so now what is happening is that if this is v then this is v and obviously because it directly goes into this and what is going to be this this is going to be uh, naturally this will be uh, so a into rather a minus a minus a into v suppose it moves distance x so if this is v suppose the area is half then this side it will be k into v. The distance moved in unit time is actually v by a minus a. If v volume is, is flowing, this is the distance traversed. So that into a will be the volume which will be expelled. So it is going to be A by A minus A into V, which is equal to A by A, uh, A minus A by A is equal to 1 minus 1 by K is equal to K minus 1 by K. So A by A minus A is going to be K by K minus 1. Yeah. So it's going to be k by k minus one into v. This is the rate at which the fluid will get ex ex expelled. Okay, this is the this, is, this will be the flow rate. So what are we achieving by doing this? Similarly, if you look at the pressure, if you look at the pressure, then you will find that. So you see that suppose the one 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 interesting thing that happens is that suppose, suppose A is equal to 0.5 of A or rather A by A is equal to 2, right. So then what happens is that you can, you can see that the, uh, for example, with the same pump flow rate V the uh, distance traveled per unit time is going to be, uh, if this is V, this is going to be the, the, the flow into, this is going to be V. And in the previous case, what was happening? In the previous case, what was happening is that, uh, if we go to the previous case, how do we go to the previous case? Fast. 
yeah in the previous case we were having uh, so you you can you can you can actually find out that we have we have, we have to do it again we, we can actually find out that the 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 interesting point is that you can work it out in fact this can be a nice exercise that there are two things that will happen the first thing is that you will you will find that number 1 two point number 1 is that say let us say 2 is to 1 area ratio then you will find that the extension and retraction speeds are same but they are not going to be same for other area ratios that must be remembered similarly you will find that so you see we can find that at a at a at a, at a smaller if we if we directly connected to it to tank say in the case of the extension stroke if we directly connected to connected this to pump and that to tank then we would have had a slower motion with the same pump flow rate we would have got a slower motion which we are so the the advantage of regeneration is that with the same flow rate rating pump we are able to generate faster motion but at the same time we'll see that we'll require higher pump pressure right so so what happens is that i mean basically for for that is when we'll require higher pump pressure if we want to drive a load which requires the same force to to be driven then in the regenerative circuit we need higher pressure so basically we are trading off pressure with flow that is we are we can use a lower flow rate pump to achieve a certain speed but at the same time if you want to achieve a certain force then we have to give higher pressure so this is the basic feature of a, this regenerative retraction circuit so moving on to the next one this is a regenerative reciprocating circuit with with change over to conventional mode so what, what is happening here basically the same type only thing that is happening here is that uh, here you see initially we have uh, again pump i'm sorry what is this happening here again you have pump uh, you have relief valve you have three position direction valve with solenoids and hydraulic pilot and so in the first case in this position that is shown flow is like this like this to the cap end starts moving goes this way and this is wrong actually you should draw it like this so comes freely and there is regeneration right so initially there is regeneration so with the given pump flow rate speed will be higher now if at the end there is a higher force encountered which cannot be uh, which cannot be supported by the prime mover at that flow rate then what is going to happen is that the pressure here will build up whenever this re faces resistance the pressure here builds up when the pressure here will build up and this is opposite so this is going to be connected like this so now you see that it will be after the after the pressure builds up it will connect like this and flow through this so now across this there will be a full pressure and there is no regeneration so therefore the speed will fall and therefore it will be it will still be able to handle the pressure right now so so at the end if 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 there is a higher force requirement it will it will change over by this valve from a regenerative circuit to a conventional reciprocating circuit what will happen in the in the other position in the, in the other position it, it, it's very simple in the other position it will be here so then what will happen is that the, this is this will be the flow so it will directly flow through this check valve straight and it will come back directly it will actually come back here and it will get connected to tank so 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 that's a very conventional mode so 
in this case it will there is there is no pressure requirement and it will it will come back so on the only ad advantage is that since we are we have higher force requirement so as long as the force requirement is manageable by the pump we are going for a regenerative circuit having so with the pump flow rate we are achieving a higher speed but whenever the force requirement goes up so we are immediately switching over to a it the, I mean the system automatically switch switches over to a conventional circuit pressure is now full applied so we can manage and the flow rate falls uh, and, and, the, uh, and with the flow rate we have a lower speed so that is the advantage of this circuit next we have a sequencing circuit so in the sequencing circuit what is happening is that here now in this example we we have more than one cylinder so far what we have been doing is that we are uh, we have handled only one cylinder but sometimes it happens that you need to operate multiple cylinders and uh, uh, for example suppose you have a you have a you have a wood working machine right you have a, you have a planing machine so before you plane the machine before you start moving the planing uh, cutter you have to hold the job so the sequence is that first operate the holding cylinder then start moving the planer so the planer extends then the planer retracts then remove the uh, clamp cylinder so you see that we are we have every time we operate we have to operate it in first clamp then extension of planing cylinder then retraction of planing cylinder then unclamp so this is a particular sequence of two cylinders which have which have to be operated so now we'll see how we can achieve this one right so uh, here we are so here is the circuit so what are we going to do look at this circuit so we have uh, we have here we have two cylinders one is j another is h right and we have we have normal pump this is the main valve okay which is being operated here is the relief valve d and these are the three valves which actually cause the sequencing right so now what happens is that initially cylinder h extending right so it is in this position look at the position then what is the flow cylinder h extending means it flows through this check valve open direction flows into cap end goes out through this flows through and returns this is here is tank so this is the position and so the cylinder h is extending going up this is the first phase of the cycle after some time what will happen is that cylinder h will stop it has to it it comes across a it comes across a mechanical stop now now what happens so the moment it comes to a mechanical stop here this pressure will now build up because there it, there cannot be any further flow through this flow is stopped so immediately this point rises to pump pressure that will operate this valve right cannot go through this cannot go through this at this point so it goes through this and starts pushing starts pushing valve j so flow goes like this like this like this so cylinder j extends right all through this remember that this pressure there is a pressure on this so this so this pressure is holding this is pressed cylinder h is pressed up so there is a if you want if you are using it for clamping there is a clamping pressure 
Next, cylinder J retracting. Next, what happens is now you have moved the solenoid. So you have moved the solenoid, and it is now actually this is wrong. Actually, this should be this is wrong. This should be connected to this point, and this pump should be connected to this point. So now the pump flow is connected like this, goes through this, goes through this, cylinder J retracts, flows out through this, flow free flow, check valve and goes through this, goes through this to pump tank, cylinder J retracts, right. Next. Last point, uh -uh. last point, now cylinder J has retracted fully, so now this pressure cannot, so now the pressure here builds up, so the pressure here builds up, so the pressure here also builds up and this now pushes the cylinder down. But this time, no note that it has to pass through this. So therefore, while the cylinder H is coming down, there is a there is always a back pressure. This is not connected to tank because it's not passing through this. It's passing through the relief valve. So the cylinder H coming down is actually being here. The net force is actually being controlled. So it is coming down slowly. You know, sometimes when you have vertical coming down, etc., under weight, you want that the coming going up is can be f fast, but going down has to be at a low force. So this is what we have achieved by, uh, so we have achieved the sequencing. So these are some of the circuits and what we have seen in this lesson, we have seen unloading circuits, system pressure selection circuits, various kinds of reciprocating circuits, reciprocating circuits with rapid modes, reciprocating circuits with regeneration, reciprocating circuits with regeneration plus conventional and finally we have seen sequencing circuits which are basically reciprocating circuits with multiple cylinders, okay. So that brings us to the end of the uh, lesson, points to ponder, many questions you can think of, for example, can you imagine what would happen if the check valve was not present in the first unloading circuit, there will be problem. How would you modify the system if you wanted to unload pump B instead of pump A in that first system, that is very simple. It, the circuit is very symmetric, so you will have to, whatever you did for pump A, you have to move for pump B. Why are lines connected to, s connecting C to D and D to E marked in dashed lines? This is the second one, that is system pressure selection, because they are pilot lines. Sorry, I, I have already given an answer. You are supposed to think about it. Can you, one thing I wanted to mention is that in many cases you will find that, I, I, have, I have said that some limit switch operates and that operates some solenoid. So how does that happen? So you have to have a scheme for that. Sometimes you can have a purely electrical scheme, sometimes you can have a simple, you know, sometimes you can have a simple relay type scheme or sometimes you can have a PLC based scheme. So various special arrangements are needed. So for example, I have given one, can you briefly describe a scheme to automate the above system such that whenever in the intermediate pressure mode pressure setting is exceeded, the system would automatically switch to the low pressure mode. Previously, it was being done manually as it is shown in that. So you can devise a some control mechanism by which it will sense the pressure and it will switch on. How does the solenoid get energized if the limit switch is made? Same question. Is the speed of the cylinder going to be equal during extension and retraction when you have a regenerative circuit? If not, then what decides the speeds? We have analyzed this. It is the area ratio, but how does it decide? That you figure out. Explain all parts of the symbol of the directional valve C, basically same except for a very something special. This is about the regenerative reciprocating circuit, only the directional valve has a detention. That was the only special thing. This is we have discussed regarding the issues regarding pressure and flow. So that brings us to the end of the lesson 28. Thank you very much. Welcome to lesson 30 of industrial automation and control. In this lesson, 
which is entitled energy savings with variable speed drives. We are going to explain and demonstrate that for a, for a kind of application which is uh, very predominant in the industry, very common, how, uh, what are the, firstly we are going to see what are the uh, various kinds of uh, flow control applications, that is the application that we are trying to consider. So, its flow can be of gas or liquid. So, accordingly we have either uh, what are known as fans or blowers or we have pumps. Fans, blowers and pumps constitute an enormous, uh, a very significant fraction of the loads which are driven by motors and motors which consume a large amount of electrical power in the industry. So, they are very common and common applications and very significant from the energy point of view. So, we are going to see that in such applications how flow is to be controlled and then uh, we are also going to see that if you flow is typically controlled by driving a pump by a motor. Uh, but if you drive a pump by a motor, then it will drive a certain amount of air, let us say. Uh, if you have a pump, it could be water. Now, the demand for this air or water is not the same all the time. So, the flow has to be controlled. Now, there are, so firstly, how do we when we connect a machine to the pump, what is the amount of flow that is established? That depends on the pump characteristics, that depends on the uh, machine characteristics. So, we are going to see that how when you connect a pump or a fan with a so called load, how is the operating point established? What will be the pressure? What will be the flow? It is actually much like you know establishing an operating point when you connect a battery with a circuit or a load, right. So, we are going to see that and we will see that depending on how we can vary this operating point, see we, we have to vary this operating point because we need to vary the flow. Now, the flow can be varied by various ways of varying the operating point and it is, so some of these ways are maybe very simple, but may be, may not be efficient in from an energy point of view, while others may involve more complex technology, but possibly would be more energy saving. So, we are going to look at uh, two of the most common techniques and show that how their energy characteristics are going to be different. In fact, that will motivate.